Okay, so today we have a funny Hellcat story for you. And, uh, you know, it might not be that much funny if it actually happened to you, but it's kind of a funny story, uh, all's well that ends well. As well as a quick update on my uh, tire pressure sensors in my new wheels and tires here that are not working. I will update you on that, uh, what's going on with that. I bought the stuff from uh, Factory Reproductions, the, the Factory Reproductions Hellcat wheels from the company Factory Reproductions. So we'll touch on that, and I'll tell you what the update with that is as well. Oh, considering uh, some of the controversy and uh, interesting things that have been going on in the uh, YouTube Mopar world as of late, I just wanted to make an announcement that uh, my car has not been stolen, and uh, hopefully it won't be, no matter how many views it gives me. I'll just leave it at that. So today's uh, funny, or semi-funny, like I said, depending on whether it happened to you or not, um, story about a uh, Dodge Challenger Hellcat uh, coming from, uh, come to us from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm going to read off a sheet here, so this isn't the most professional video ever, but um, um, a man named Leon Parks was actually found in the trunk of an auctioned off uh, Challenger Hellcat um, at an auction in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. Um, it's the Mannheim Auto Auction. I don't know, some of you may know that if you're from that area. I'm not from that area, and I've really been up in that area much, so I don't know, so I don't know much about it, but this happened on... Uh, on May 30th of uh, 2019, so a couple days ago, and um, apparently this guy's wanted on a parole violation. But anyway, he was found like semi-conscious in the trunk of this uh, Dodge Challenger Hellcat that was being auctioned off. He was uh, apparently found by a, uh, someone who worked for the auction as they were going over the car, and uh, he was um, semi-conscious and uh, apparently not in very good shape and had been in the trunk for a while. Um, they got him some water, got him an ambulance, got him to the hospital, and then of course found out uh, by trying to figure out who he was. Apparently he wasn't super cooperative from what I've read. And uh, the police finally figured out who he was by his fingerprints. And it turns out he's wanted in New York on uh, some parole violations and uh, some weapons charges. Of course, being from New York, weapons charges can mean just about anything. So, you know, we'll give the guy the benefit of the doubt on that one since their uh, laws are not kind of crazy up there. So, by the way, this, uh, this story comes from uh, LancasterOnline.com. It's the uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania little local news there. So um, I'll put a link up to that. And uh, the gentleman that was in the uh, trunk of the Hellcat, semi-conscious, and they're not sure how long he had been there, uh, his name is Leon Parks. He's 25 uh, from the Bronx, New York. And like I said, he was wanted on a couple different charges. And uh, so kind of a strange story. Can you imagine working in an auction and uh, going over one of the cars and you find a what you, I think at first the guy probably thought it was a dead body in the trunk, but uh, uh, he was breathing. He just wasn't uh, res very responsive. So apparently he's going to be okay physically. Uh, and from what I understand, like I said, I don't think he's been real cooperative uh, in any of this. He didn't want to tell them who he was or anything like that. Uh, the weird thing is, how did he get in there? Did he crawl in there on purpose to try to hide and got stuck? Um, I don't know how you could get stuck because there's a uh, little lever, a little thing you can pull in there that actually I think glows in the dark even. So. Uh, to let yourself out of the trunk if you were to get stuck. But anyway, someone stuck him in there, or he crawled in there, or maybe he was intoxicated in some way and crawled in there, and uh, who knows what the real story is, but uh, just kind of an interesting thing. Uh, you know, I'm always looking up uh, Dodge Challenger and uh, Mopar News and things like that, and I just kind of stumbled across this this morning. Thought it was pretty funny. Some of you probably heard this because I think I've seen it going around on Facebook a little bit too because it's sort of a funny story. Now, you know, if he had been dead, it wouldn't have been very funny, but... Uh, Luckily, the guy's alive, so uh, Leon Parks, you're a lucky guy. You didn't die in that trunk, and uh, someone found you. And, of course, I told you I'd update you on the uh, TPMS sensors. That's the, uh, uh, you know, tire pressure monitoring system. You know, I got these new wheels and tires that I've been showing off to you guys, and I've been so proud of because I think they look so good. But uh, as some of you may know, the other day, the uh, some of the TPMS sensors that came with the uh, package have stopped working. I bought this from Factory Reproductions. I um, bought the whole package together, the you know the wheels, tires, uh, with the sensors, they came uh, mounted, balanced, and all that stuff. All I had to do was put them on the car. So anyway, after a couple of days, they stopped working. I contacted the company. They've been very, very cooperative. Uh, no problems at all. They are sending out four new sensors to me. And uh, the only thing is they need the old ones back. So um, I've got to get these, uh, you know, taken in somewhere and have the new sensors put in. Uh, send them the old ones back as well as um, send them the bill whatever it costs me to have these things swapped out and they're going to take care of that bill as well um, obviously not ideal it's kind of a hassle kind of an inconvenience but you know things happen and how companies handle um, issues 
is how you really judge a company. Everything, there's always going to be issues, you know, anything you do, there could potentially be an issue, something doesn't work or something shows up damaged or whatever. There can always be that potential and the, the real, um, you know, the real thing to pay attention to is how a company uh, handles it in the end and they're, they're handling this very well so far. Hopefully this will all work out for us and everything will be great. So I will take them in when I get them and uh, have them swapped out, make sure I get the old ones back, make sure I get a nice bill from uh, the uh, tire place that does it and uh, I will get that sent off to them. Hopefully everything will be covered. I will be keeping you guys updated on that and uh, hopefully it's all good news. So uh, that's about it on those two subjects. I'm in a parking lot of a local store here that uh, recently closed. I think I've talked about that before. Uh, Shopco stores, those of you who are familiar with that, they're, they've gone bankrupt and most of the uh, uh, locations are closing. Ours closed about a week or two ago. I'm sitting in the empty parking lot and I got some kind of strange looking car over here that just uh, pulled up and decided to stare at me. Of course, they may think I'm doing the same thing they are, I don't know, but uh, they're pulling towards me now. Let's see what happens to go the other way. I think they're just checking me out real quick. I'm not sure what that was about. I was gonna turn around and show you, but they're driving off pretty fast. I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they just need to pull in and do something. But it looked like they were watching me for a second. But anyway, whatever. I'm not doing anything wrong. I guess I could be, there's nothing that says I can't come in here, so whatever. It's a beautiful Sunday here in Superior, Nebraska, guys. It's uh, 77 degrees, a little bit of a breeze, but boy, is it really nice. Um, something else I wanna tell you guys about. I sold the um, original, uh, factory wheels and tires that came on this car today. Um, I sold them uh, very cheap for actually about half, probably less than half of what they go for on eBay. Um, but I did, I did that because I sold them locally to a guy about 60 miles from here who drove down and got them. Um, I could have probably waited. I probably could have got a lot more money for them. Um, if you look on eBay and see what original Scat Pack wheels are going for. Sky pack rims and tires and everything, um, even though the tires are pretty worn. But uh, the rims themselves are worth quite a bit, and uh, I got just uh, probably a little less than half of what they're actually worth. But uh, my issue was I didn't want to deal with shipping these huge items. I am uh, just not interested in that. Unless somebody was going to pay me a ridiculous amount of money, which probably wasn't going to happen, um, I just wasn't interested in shipping the things. It's just a hassle. Um, I live out here in the middle of nowhere. I'd had to set up, you know, the shipping thing. I just don't want anything to do with it. I'd had to package them up somehow. Um, I probably could have used some of the packaging that these came in. But uh, all in all, I uh, decided to make it easy. I listed them cheap, and they sold real quick. After I listed them, the guy drove down and got them. So um, I don't know if he's reselling them. He may very well be. He's probably going to make some pretty good money. I think he's. Um, I think he said he's going to use them on a project. So anyway. Uh, just thought I'd let you know that. I, maybe I should have kept them. I don't know. Uh, selling them may not have been the best idea, but they're kind of in the way. You know, as you guys can see, I don't have a very big garage and uh, didn't really have anywhere else to put them. And I uh, just kind of decided, uh, you know what, uh, I think I'm going to get rid of those. So anyway, what do you guys think of that? Well, should I have kept them? Should I, uh, should I have waited and asked more money and waited until I can get more money for them? Anyway, I, I kind of do that sometimes. If I don't need something, I'll list it cheap just to get rid of it kind of in my nature. I don't know why I do that, but it's not like I needed the money or anything, but it's just, uh, I don't know. I just do that a lot. And anyway, this guy's, hopefully someone will get some good use out of them. It's kind of like my motorcycle. I'd rather see somebody get some good use out of something than um, have it just sitting around my house. Also, I know this video is kind of jumping all over the place, but another thing is this camera that I'm talking to right now, uh, eight man, uh, it's a little, uh, it's called an eight man action cam. It's a, it's a GoPro clone kind of thing. Um, it works really well and I really like it and it has decent audio. I'm very happy with it. Unfortunately, uh, when I was making the wheel and tire video and I was putting them on, I tried to attach it to the side of the car with the suction cup thing and it fell off. And then I put it back up and it fell off again. Well now, um, I think there may be a little bit of an issue with some of the, uh, with the, with the lens possibly. I'm not sure. We'll see in this video, but in the last one there were some weird looking things. And um, also, when I drive or make any movement with it on, it's making a rattling sound, which is why I got the camera, because my old camera was making that rattling sound, because it had gotten banged around a few times. And uh, so it was making a rattling in the audio when I was moving, so it was very annoying to make videos with a rattling in the audio. And now I have my new camera. I dropped it, and now I have a rattle in this. It's not quite as annoying as the other rattle, but if you watch my last couple of videos where I was driving and talking like this, instead of just sitting here like I am, you can hear it rattling. So. I guess I will buy, I will probably buy another one of this exact same camera because I do like it and uh, it's worked really well and it has really good reviews and everything as far as the clones go. And um, so anyway, I'll probably get another one. 
uh, unless somebody out there has a, a better suggestion for me. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, but through no fault of Ape Man, I dropped it twice on the on the hard pavement and uh, hasn't been the same since. But anyway, whatever. Eh, that kind of sucks, but you know it is what it is. It, luckily, they're not very expensive. They're nowhere near the price of a GoPro. So we are home, which means I'm going to wrap this video up. Say goodbye to y'all. I hopefully we'll see you guys tonight on the live stream. Take care, guys. Thanks for being here.